Hearing loss. Hearing loss is defined as impairment of hearing, and its severity may vary from mild to moderate or profound. Hearing loss is characterized by types of loss, such as conductive and sensory neural. Location of the problem is usually seen in the external ear, middle ear, cochlea, auditory nerve, and central. Mode of onset is sudden or insidious. Degree of loss is mild, moderate, and severe. Hearing loss may be bilateral or unilateral. Classification Hearing loss is classified into organic and non-organic. Organic is further classified into conductive and sensory neural. Sensory neural has two components, sensory and neural components. The neural component has central and peripheral pathways. Conductive hearing loss. Any disease process which interferes with the conduction of sound to reach the cochlea causes conductive hearing loss. The lesion may lie at any site, such as the external ear, tympanic membrane, middle ear, or ossicles up to the stapedial vestibular joint. The characteristics of conductive hearing loss are as follows. Negative Rena test, that is bone conduction more than air conduction. Weber lateralized to the poorer ear. Normal absolute bone conduction. Low frequencies were affected more. Audiometry shows bone conduction better than air conduction with an air bone gap. The greater the air bone gap, more is the conductive loss. Loss is not more than 60 decibels. Speech discrimination is good. Etiology The cause may be congenital or acquired. Congenital causes are Medial atresia, fixation of stapes footplate, fixation of malleus head, ossicular discontinuity, congenital cholesteatoma. Acquired causes are external ear, any obstruction in the ear canal like wax, foreign body, furuncle, acute inflammatory swelling, benign or malignant tumor, or atresia of the canal. Middle ear, perforation of the tympanic membrane, traumatic or infective, fluid in the middle ear in conditions like acute otitis media, serous otitis media, or hemotympanum. Mass in the middle ear may be a benign or malignant tumor. Disruption of ossicles, as in trauma to ossicular chain, chronic suppurative otitis media, cholesteatoma. Fixation of ossicles in conditions like autosclerosis, tympanosclerosis, adhesive otitis media. Eustachian tube blockage, like a retracted tympanic membrane, serous otitis media. Average hearing loss is seen in different lesions of the conductive apparatus. Complete obstruction of the ear canal leads to 30 decibels of hearing loss. Perforation of the tympanic membrane varies and is directly proportional to the size of perforation. It ranges from 10 to 40 decibels. Ossicular interruption with intact drum causes 54 decibels loss. Ossicular interruption with perforation has 38 decibels of hearing loss. Malleus fixation ranges from 10 to 25 decibels. Closure of oval window leads to 60 decibels loss. If we note here, ossicular interruption with an intact drum causes more loss than ossicular interruption with a perforated drum. Management Most cases of conductive hearing loss can be managed by medical or surgical means. It consists of removal of canal obstructions like impacted wax, foreign body, osteoma or exostosis, benign or malignant tumors, keratotic mass, or medial atresia.
Removal of fluid through meringotomy with or without grommet insertion. Removal of mass from the middle ear by tympanotomy and removal of small middle ear tumors or cholesteatoma behind the intact tympanic membrane. Stapedectomy as an autosclerotic fixation of Stapes footplate. Tympanoplasty is done to repair the perforation, ossicular chain, or both. Hearing aid is used in cases where surgery is not possible, is refused, or has failed. Tympanoplasty It's an operation to eradicate disease in the middle ear and reconstruct hearing mechanism. It may be combined with mastoidectomy if there is a progression of the disease. Type of middle ear reconstruction depends on the damage present in the ear. The procedure may be limited only to the repair of the tympanic membrane, meringoplasty, the reconstruction of the acicular chain, aciculoplasty, or both, tympanoplasty. Reconstructive surgery of the ear has been greatly facilitated by the development of an operating microscope, microsurgical instruments, and bicompatible implant materials. From the physiology of the hearing mechanism, the following principles can be deduced to restore hearing surgically. An intact tympanic membrane provides a large hydraulic ratio between the tympanic membrane and the stapes footplate. A secular chain to conduct sound from the tympanic membrane to the oval window. Two functioning windows, one on the scala vestibuli to receive sound vibrations, and the other on the scala tympani to act as a relief window. If it's only one window, as in stapes fixation or closure of a round window, there will be no movement of cochlear fluids resulting in conductive hearing loss. Acoustic separation of two windows so that sound does not reach both windows simultaneously. It can be achieved by providing an intact tympanic membrane, the preferential pathway to one window, usually the oval, by providing an acicular chain, and by the presence of air in the middle ear. Functioning eustachian tube to provide aeration to the middle ear. A functional sensory neural apparatus, that is the cochlea and eighth nerve. Meringoplasty. It's the repair of the tympanic membrane. Graft materials of choice are temporalis fascia, or the perichondrium taken from the patient. Sometimes, homographs, such as dura, vein, fascia, or cadaver tympanic membrane are also used. The repair can be done by two techniques, the underlay or the overlay. In the underlay technique, margins of perforation are freshened and the graft is placed medial to perforation or tympanic annulus if large and is supported by gel foam in the middle ear. In the overlay technique, the graft is placed lateral to the fibrous layer of the tympanic membrane after carefully removing all squamous epithelium from the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane remnant. Ossicular reconstruction. Ossicles are essential for the transmission of sound from the tympanic membrane to the labyrinth. Several types of prosthesis are available to replace ossicles depending on the ossicular defects. The three types are autograft, allograft, and homograft. Autograft materials are the incus, head of the malleus, and cortical bone of the mastoid. 
It is of low cost and easily available, but there are a risk of harboring disease. They can be sculptured to bridge the gap. Allograft materials are plastifor, polyethylene sponge, hydroxyapatite implants, titanium implants, glass isomer, Teflon prosthesis, hydroxyapatite 50% plus titanium 50%, hydroxyapatite plus silicone flex hydroxyapatite, hydroxyapatite plus polyethylene. They're available ready-made, easy to store and use, but costly and most likely to be extruded. Homographs consist of preserved ossicles only, or ossicles with the tympanic membrane. They are very difficult to procure and contain a high risk of disease transmission. At the time of ossicular reconstruction in chronic otitis media, one should ensure middle ear is healthy and free of mucosal disease and cholesteatoma. Eustachian tube function should be good. Atelotactic middle ear shows poor eustachian tube function. In cases of canal wall-up mastoidectomy done for cholesteatoma or active mucosal disease, a two-step procedure is done, where reconstruction is delayed for about six months to ensure the ear is free of disease. Primary ossicular reconstruction can be performed in the traumatic ossicular disruption, fixation of ossicles, canal wall down procedures when there's no mucosal disease or cholesteatoma. Types of prosthesis. Incus prosthesis. Used when incus is missing. But the handle of malleus and stapes with superstructure are present and functional. Incus stapes prosthesis used when incus and stapes superstructure is missing. Malleus and stapes footplate are functional. Partial ossicular replacement prosthesis. Used when malleus and incus are absent. Stapes are present and mobile. Partial ossicular replacement prosthesis is placed between the tympanic membrane and the stapes head. Total ossicular replacement prosthesis. Used when malleus, incus, and stapes superstructure are absent. Only the stapes footplate is present and is mobile. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.